uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed an honor to speak with you today. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan, I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you for participating in the Katagalan Forum online to consider the traditional and non-traditional threat and the challenges we will face in the post-COVID-19 world. Today, our forum had quite a number of productive discussions. More than 20 current and former officials, scholars and experts from 10 countries have offered valuable insights on a range of important issues. We are particularly gratified to have Ambassador Kelly Craft, former U.S. Permanent Representative to the United Nations, deliver an opening keynote speech this morning. Her speech expressed staunch support and friendship for Taiwan, and it reminded us the fact that Taiwan as a force for good will never be alone on the way of pursuing freedom and democracy. If we sum up the key word being mentioned most frequently through our four panel discussions today, whether we were talking about Taiwan Strait development, Indo-Pacific stability, gray zone coercion, or reconstructing global supply chain, China is no doubt the main theme of our shared concern. In recent years, political, economic, military, and technological dynamics in the Indo-Pacific have evolved rapidly. In addition to the sea changes, COVID-19 has had devastating impact since its emergence last year. However, in every crisis, there is opportunity. While China is expanding hegemony and spreading tentacles throughout the world during the pandemic, China has also exposed its true malicious global ambitions. Thus, over the past few months, like-minded countries have reached a consensus on security issues arising from China and then come closer together to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific and to safeguard our belief of democracy and freedom. The resurgence of the Quad is a striking example. Following the first Quad summit took place on March 12th, the second summit is scheduled to be held this autumn. At this interval, the Quad working groups on vaccines, critical technologies, and climate change have also some progress. At the same time, the G7 summit, NATO summit, the EU, US summit, etc., also demonstrated a united desire for a world anchored by democratic values and unconstrained by coercion. We can see a trans-Pacific alliance of like-minded democracies gradually taking shape and a renewed transatlantic partnership. In today's discussions related to the Quad, it may take a time for the Quad to become fully institutionalized, and it may be an early stage to discuss enlargement. However, for now, Quad is still an ideal platform for the four like-minded nations to develop cooperations on all aspects pertinent to security and the well-being of the people in the democratic communities. Also, it leaves open the possibility for making specific Quad Plus activities depending on the interest and availability of other partners. I do hope and I believe 
Taiwan will participate in some form in the near future. On many occasions in the international arena, the importance of the peace and the stability in Taiwan Strait has been underscored recently. It shows Taiwan Strait development is not just a cross-strait issue, but a global concern as well. Any development in the Taiwan Strait is indeed a challenge, not only to the Indo-Pacific liberal order, but also the rest of the world. Why Taiwan matters? Taiwan is of critical strategic importance to the region and the world. Taiwan is a defender of shared values, a sharp contrast with authoritarian China. Taiwan is situated in the middle of the first island chain in the West Pacific, a crucial geographical position to contain China's military power and its spread of authoritarianism. Taiwan is a key partner in the global ICT industry as well, especially in the supply chain of semiconductor. Due to its strategic position in many aspects, Taiwan faces tremendous challenges and threats from China. For example, PRC warplanes and the vessels have continuously encircled Taiwan. More than 150 days as of today, this year, Chinese warplanes could be spotted on Taiwan's ADIZ. In addition, Chinese government-backed disinformation flooded Taiwan. We received nearly 30 million attacks a month, and about half of which are suspected to come from China. However, facing military and non-military attacks, Taiwan has never succumbed to the pressure from China, but has become the front line of all democracies against China's highlighted rhetoric assault, military intimidation, and all sort of gray zone tactics. Taiwan is able and willing to share our experiences of how to defend democracy for more than half a century. Taiwan is a reliable partner ready to contribute as a force for good. Taiwan not only safeguards its democratic way of life with great determination, but also commits to working with like-minded partners to promote democracy, security, and prosperity across the region. To echo discussions today, Taiwan strongly calls for China to refrain from provocative and destabilizing gray zone activities in East Asia waters and to resolve conflicts by peaceful means throughout multilateral negotiation. In addition, I also agree that supply chains should be a source of strength instead of weakness in the global economy. And it is vital to build trusted global supply chain. Also politically and commercially, it is logical to consider Taiwan to be the top partner in this economic reconstructions. Taiwan's continued promotion of multilateral dialogue is part of how we are working to find peaceful resolution to the security issues of our day. The Kadagaland Forum is one example of our commitment to being an active, reliable partner in the Indo-Pacific. At this challenging time, Taiwan stands in solidarity with the partners, and we hope our friends would also stand by us. Together, we can realize a free, open, inclusive, and resilient Indo-Pacific democracy will and must prevail in the end. In closing, 
I would like to take this opportunity to express our thanks to, pro, to the Prospect Foundation and the people working behind. Particularly, I would like to thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Goodbye.